So for this part of the video, I just want to show you what's in my camera bag. Um, at the moment I'm filming on the GoPro because I want to show you, I've got two cameras, two DSLRs, and they're both in my Think Tank Airport uh, International version two at the moment. So I just want to show you everything in the bag quickly of the GoPro before I put my um, Nikon D750 on the tripod uh, to film me taking the stuff out and explaining it to you. So here's a, a quick look. So as you see, there's the Nikon D750, Nikon D7100, everything in the bag. There we go. And then uh, I'll see you in a second. Hi there and welcome back. Um, I don't know if you've seen, but about three years ago, I've done another What's In My Bag video, which was really popular. So that's why I'm doing another one now, because I've updated my bag and just a few bits and pieces. I've still got some stuff from the bag three years ago, but some new additions as well, which is including my Nikon D750, which I'm using to film this, and my Tamron uh, 15 to 30 f2.8, which is an amazing lens, a great combination. So that's set up now uh, on the tripod filming me, uh, just to show you an updated version of what's in my camera bag. So let's get to it. So the first thing is uh, I'm gonna show you my cam camera, the, camera was in my older camera bag which was the Nikon D7100 uh, which is a crop censored camera uh, 24 megapixels I've got a, a Hanel third-party battery grip which is probably uh, more than half price of the Nikon version uh, it hasn't failed me it's really good this battery grip I really like it D7100 fantastic camera and quality absolutely love it I just wanted to go full frame. I've always wanted to go full frame for you know the extra quality and you know, all the other things that go full frame. Um, so this is now my backup camera. So the D7100, which is a great camera. Um, now some of the lenses uh, that I use, which I'll show you which regard to which camera. So this lens first, which is um, uh, my Sigma 70 to 200, which was uh, I've had for quite a while now. Uh, this is the DG HSM or the APO. I don't know what they stand for. It's the 2.8 version. I couldn't afford the Nikon version, so I uh, went for this. I can't remember what it was, about seven, seven, eight hundred pounds. Uh, the quality is very good. I wouldn't say it's amazing. The worst thing I find about this lens is when you get up to nearer the 200 millimeter end, um, I don't know if it's just a copy I've got, uh, the picture is, it can be a bit fuzzy. Um, up to about 170 mil it's fine um, I don't get some weird artifacts when I go into 200 mil so I don't sort of go up to that millimeter that often um, and plus oh, I don't use this lens that often really but um, yeah but you know everyone sort of has one in the can bag so I thought why not me so now what else we've we got we've got um, the Nikon 50 mil I've had this for years about 100 pounds uh, great entry level lens for a uh, wide aperture. You know, this is the 1.8. This is the D version. Um, very rarely use it, but it's there if I want it. You know, uh, normally everyone starts off with a, a 50 mil to get into the wide apertures. Uh, excellent quality as well. So, you now what else have we got? So, now, yeah, the 24 to 70. Um, absolutely love this lens. The quality is fantastic. Um, it's got its own vibration control. Oh yeah, it's VC. It's just a fantastic lens. The quality is absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, it just weren't wide enough for me, which is why I got the fifteen to thirty to go on the full frame camera. Um, yeah, but this is a, a fantastic lens for a mid range zoom, for a little bit of extra reach. Um, absolutely love this. Well worth the money. I think it's about seven eight hundred pounds, which is probably about three four five hundred pounds cheaper than the Nikon version again but the quality is definitely not less. Now, what have we got? Oh, yeah. So another sort of portrait style lens, which is uh, the Nikon 1.8. This is the G version. Once again, I don't use it that often, but it's in my bag, you know, the wide aperture, but the quality is superb. It's fantastic quality. Uh, it's a nice looking lens. It looks a little bit beefy and short and stout, but this is a, an excellent lens let's put that there out of the way what else have we got in there so ah uh, yeah my sigma 10 20 this was was my all-time favorite lens for years because i love ultra wide angle and this has got a lovely quirky creative it's fun this was on a crop sensor camera i, I took some of the amazing shots with it um i love 
the distortion. I know people don't like it, but I love it. You know, it's, it adds a, a fun element and it adds a different look to pictures. What normally people take. This is about. This was about three hundred sixty pounds when I first got this, and uh, it was on my camera about ninety five percent of the time. Absolutely love that lens. So that's for a crop sensor camera, which is D seventy one hundred. Ah, yeah, this is uh, the Sigma one hundred and five, the DG Macro. Uh, once again, apart from the fifty, everyone really should have a macro lens in their bag. There's so many things you can do with it. And um, once again, don't come out all the time, but it's there if I want it. Um, yeah, uh, won a, a competition with it and a runner-up in the competition. Some of the shots I took with this, and it's an older lens, so you know, yeah, definitely get one of these. Now, oh, now after the lenses, we've got um, what we've we got. Well, I've got the Giotto Rocket Blower, which is great fun to get through airport control if you want one of them. But it keeps your lenses blows dust off your lenses. Also, let's put these there a minute. I've got the Lee Filters Foundation Kit, which is the ring adapters and uh, the bracket that fits onto the lens, so you can put hundred millimeter square filters not cheap not cheap at all these um let's have a look so now we've got i've got these filters i've got the free lee soft grad filters no sorry these are the hard grad filters not soft i've got the hard grad filters which means they're i don't know if you can see it, they're sort of dark at the top and the clear at the bottom great for landscapes for darkening down the sky we've got the 0 0.3 0 0.6 and 0 0.9 which is a uh, two oh, i can't even remember the stops now Anyway, I normally use, I think that's, oh yeah, one, two, and three stops. 0.9 being the three stops. And uh, I normally only ever use the the two stops. I've never really ever used the three stops unless it's on the long exposures and the dramatic, really dramatic skies. So there's this one and, uh, um, yeah. So I've got uh, another neutral density filter, ND8, which is just to slow exposures down. Just a generic one, who's, who's that from? That's Cood. I uh, don't use it often, so it's good enough for what it is. I've got a 10 stop filter. This is the High Tech Pro Stopper. I've taken loads of amazing long exposures with uh, with this. Uh, it slots into the 100mm uh, filter. Um, for my Tamron, the 1530, if you ever get that, you need 150mm uh, foundation kit or adapter. And, and it just I just didn't want to buy any more adapters and stuff it just costs so much money so much money so i just normally uh, expose your blend if i use that lens but i can use that kit on my 24 to 70 so if i'm using that that's fine now let's get on to my strobes don't make this video too long i started off with the nikon sb600 um in my kit bag but I very rarely use it though um but it's there if i need it if i want ttl but also i mainly use manual lenses now manual I mean, you can get them for about £40 each, and I've stuck with Yongyo. They've never failed me. So, so I'm going to look at my bag now for... Oh, there's one, yeah. I've got the Yongyo 563. I've got one of these. I think I've got a two somewhere upstairs. So I've got the two, the three. Um, and then I think I've got... Yeah, I've got I've got three Yongyo 564s in this bag somewhere. So, so yeah, there's... Yeah, there's one in there. So I've got three Yongyo, I think the cat's been crawling over my bag. I've got three Yongyo 564s, manual flash guns. Um, I find these easier if you need to change channels. They're really simple, never fail to fall, fire uh, using the trigger. I've got elastic bands to put gels on. So I use this one as a main light and these two for rim lights or hair lights if I need to. So these would be set on the same channel, but I can change them. And uh, this flash gun on its own on channel a um yeah so oh let's take these and put that there so let's put this here i'll show you that in a second to fire the flash guns i've got the yongyo 560 tx trigger and this was about 35 pounds and the beauty of this is you can uh change the zoom of the flash guns the yongyo 560s from the i think from the three upwards i'm not sure if it does on the two and you can change the power from the camera instead of having to run backwards and forwards which a lot of people have to do using manual flash guns they've like i say it's never failed to fire it fires all the time that's brilliant i've got a godox battery pack which is uh, about 100 pounds i'm going to use this to fire the main my main light so the main flash gun because it's normally normally going to be a higher power than the rim lights or the side lights or hair lights 
Um, you don't need as much power for them because they're normally, you know, whatever, 132 of power. You know, you can up to full power using this battery pack and it'll keep firing again and again and again and fast recycling times about one second and absolutely fantastic. Now, so if you've got um, flash, if you flash ones, you need more power. I recommend having a strobe and then I'd say, oh, I keep one of these in my bag as well, which is an Elemental Zeppelin 300 uh strobe light it's got all from 132 power down to up to full power and it's got um the model light beeper uh well dim light as well for the modeling light um not overly powerful but more powerful than the flash guns and if you don't want to use batteries um i won a studio kit a few years ago which was uh, from elemental they gave me a full studio kit so i had two of these but i can't fit two in my bag two's just a bit too much but yeah should have one of these Let's put this down here. Won't fit on the table. Um, oh yeah, to carry my camera around if I have to, I've got a rapid, I think it's the R7 strap over the shoulder. Camera attaches here in, in the hot shoe at the bottom or the, you know, the hole at the bottom of the camera. Screw that in and it just dangles down. You can up and fire. So that's really handy. Just screw it on when I want. Now, the other thing is you're using flash guns and strobes is you need light stands and quite good quality light stands and I always keep a couple in my bag. So yeah, there we go. We've got a Polaroid one just down on the, in the, the side of the bag. Um, air cushioned, about 40, 45 pound from Amazon. Um, sort of mid range, not the lowest quality, which I've got. I've got some Koenigs that are 9.99 each. It's about 45 pounds. Um, feels a bit better quality than 45, 45 pounds. It's obviously not the top quality, but it does the job well, holds lots of weight. Um, fantastic, I've got two of these. I think I've got another one in my bag somewhere. So, so oh, yeah, yeah, there's the other one. So, yeah, two Polaroid there to put your flash guns on, need light stands, makes your life so much easier. Let's put that down there. Also, to keep your camera steady if you're out and about, you need tripods. And the B3, the Manfrotto B3, fits in the bag ni nicely, and it's so light. Um, you know, you can even fold it down smaller, I think, just a bit smaller. It fits in most bags, like you know, see, so yeah, look, it fits in the bag nicely in the bag, in the bag back out. And uh, it's so small. The only difference between this and the other uh, Manfrotto tripod, I'll show you in a minute, this is just a bit shorter, you a bit loss of height, but I'm not sure by how much, about a foot or two. Um, but you know, you're saving all that weight as well. Um, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. I love, I love this one to keep the weight down in the bag. But, you know, I've got the other Manfrotto, um, the 055. This is the, I think, the aluminium version. I've done a previous video on that if you want to check my videos of this one. It's a sturdy. It's, it's like a, a tank, this one. And it's got, it's the Manfrotto, I don't know, is that BHQ2? Still ain't got my glasses on like the other video. Uh, this is the ball head, love ball heads. This is solid if you're doing long exposures or any photography where you need a tripod, this is not gonna move anywhere. The only thing I'd say is be careful down the beach getting sand in it. That's what ruined me other Manfrotto tripod, but after many years. Um, but this is fantastic. You just pull that and uh, you've got these new levers. You can just click them backwards and forwards. And uh, yeah, excellent. I absolutely love it. Also, if you need power for your strobe, there's no point again if you haven't got um, an extension lead to plug it into the plug socket. So you keep one of these in your bag and you can plug up to four different lights in here um, and you can plug it in in other rooms as well. And you know, you know, there's a 20, min 20 meter extension lead, 15 meter. So yeah, you can plug this in another room, have it in this room and use your lights. And then, you know, if you ain't got one of these, you know, you're gonna plug in your lights. So make sure these are in your bag as well. And uh, the other thing, because Easter's coming up, and if you get hungry, it's always nice to have a bit of chocolate. And um, yeah, Galaxy, you can't help have a bit of Galaxy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so this is a Galaxy Easter egg. So I keep these in my bag as well. I have some chocolates. So because it's Easter, it's gonna be Easter egg. But normally I keep the big bars of chocolate in my, in my bag. And uh, yeah, that's it. So you have a bit of chocolate in your bag and stuff. Um, and that's that's about it and what's in my camera bag today um you know what i want to say is the think tank airport international version 2 this is my bag i love it 
it fits so much stuff in. I, 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 you might not be surprised, but I'm surprised, I really am surprised how much stuff you can fit in this bag. It's just, it's like a TARDIS, it really is. So hats off to the Think Tank guys for making this. It's padded well. You get loads of dividers in there. You can fit all your filters in your pockets. I've spare batteries and filters and all little bits and pieces. And uh, yeah, and absolutely love it. Um, yeah, so I might put, um, up on on the page just some dimensions so you can see how i fit all this in the bag and that and i just uh, hope you enjoyed my video you can check out my previous uh, what's in my bag video see what's different and uh if you've got any questions just leave them in the comments below and uh, if you want to subscribe i've got more videos coming up i'm just doing them more often um yeah so thanks for watching subscribe thumbs up and i'll see you in the next one see you later yeah. then have you seen the cat Mrs. Tiddlypuss, Mrs. Tiddlypuss, anyone seen the cat? Anyone? Oh, God. Come here, you. How'd you get in there, eh? Mrs. Tiddlypuss. Come on, you. Off you go.